Okay, so let us um, sort of do a couple of problems right? Uh, and see if we understand what we have been um, you know, trying to learn. Okay. So, um, let us take uh, this problem. <coughs> okay. So, say uh, the thrust equation for a rocket engine. Okay. So, we have a uh, rocket engine okay. and I am going to write the thrust equation for that. So, this is thrust, right? Okay. So, this is given. So, the uh, thrust that is going to be generated by the rocket engine is given by this uh, equation. Okay. So, here uh, this is the mass flow rate, okay, m dot. This is u e, okay, which is the exit uh, gas velocity. This pressure is the exit. E is for exit. Now pressure, okay. P infinity is the ambient atmospheric pressure, okay, free stream pressure. And A e is the area of the nozzle at the exit. Okay, so. Um, and given that, so we have a liquid hydrogen and oxygen which are burnt in a combustion chamber, um, producing a combustion gas uh, pressure. Okay, so in the combustion chamber, okay, so like I said, so liquid. Uh, hydrogen and oxygen are burnt in the combustion chamber, which results in a pressure of um, 30 atmospheres and a temperature of 30 okay. Now, uh, regarding the nozzles, some other um, parameters, some other uh, values are given, right. So, if you remember, so A t here, this is the area at the throat. So, this is given, okay, this is given as 0.4 meter square, right. Um, pressure at the exit is essentially the ambient pressure, which is equal to that the universal gas constant is given joules per kg Kelvin. Okay. So, this is uh, the parameters which are given. So, uh, the uh, coefficient of specific heats is given as uh, 1.22, okay. gamma that is and uh, assume isentropic flow. Okay. As the gas expands, so you basically have isentropic flow okay. and what we have to find out here is uh, area at the exit here. So, what we need to uh, find out is calculate this area at the exit and the total thrust area at the exit and the total thrust. So, these are the two things that we need to uh, calculate uh, here. Okay. So, in order to do that, what we can see here, first things first, that we need m dot, we need m dot, we need u dot. Okay. So, let us go ahead and proceed uh, to calculate this. Okay. Let us uh, go ahead, how will we sort of uh, go about this. Okay. Now, uh, so let us start with the continuity equation. Okay. So, continuity equation tells us what? So, from continuity, okay. so right. 
So, uh, what would be a convenient place to take the uh, to consider this mass flow rate? Let us say, let us take the throat okay, as a convenient location. And if you remember right, so we uh, all the values at the throat of the nozzle is regarded with the superscript star. So, we will do that here. Okay. So, let us say, so therefore, taking it at the throat, right, at the throat a convenient location. So, what we get is Okay, now to get this uh, rho star, okay, to get this uh, rho star, okay. Now let us get the reservoir density, the reservoir density, right, which I can basically get for my gas equation. Right. So, uh, so this is my res the, the knot here corresponds to reservoir conditions. Okay. Which uh, here, how do we calculate this rho naught? How do we get this out here? Is there anything here you think we should be able to uh, use in this particular case? If I have to use the, if I have to find out the reservoir density, right? So that is the density which we can in this here when we say that in the combustion chamber, okay, two gases are burnt, which results in these. So, this is essentially the reservoir conditions. So, we can consider essentially this P and this T are the reservoir conditions and R is given to us, R is given to us here. Okay. So, we will use that. So, P naught, okay. now 30 atmospheres and 1 atmospheres is how much? If you remember right, so 1 atm, 1 atmosphere is this. Okay, in Newton per meter square. So we've got P naught and we got uh, T naught and we got R. It's also in Kelvin, so that can remain in Kelvin. Okay, so if I do that, so essentially I can write this as. Okay. So, this is the pressure in Newton per meter square, this is the universal gas constant and this is the temperature in the combustion chamber and we get this to be okay. You should just cross check this, you should just uh, do it and use your calculators to cross check that I have got this correct, you know I might be wrong. So, make sure I have got these calculations right. All right, so I get the um, density of the gas, right? Gas sort of mixture in the combustion chamber out here. We were given just pressure and temperature, so now we've calculated the density. This is my uh, reservoir conditions, right? In the combustion chamber, which I've got as 1.665. So why don't we write that here also? Okay, since we have calculated this, so since we have calculated values. Let me write that here. Okay. So, this is a calculated value. Okay. Now, uh, then how do we get the uh, density at the throat? So, okay. now the what we will use here if you remember for a calorically perfect gas right for a calorically perfect gas right this is an equation which holds okay this is an equation which holds for a calorically perfect gas now rho naught is something that we have calculated now let us take rho star if i take rho star okay so, if I consider rho star which is at the throat, right, so I basically get m star which is equal to 1. So, basically throat is the sonic zone, 
right. So, this goes to 1. So, we are left with this uh, expression here, right. So, therefore, if I calculate uh, this, okay. So, what I get out here, I, then I put gamma is equal to 1.22, right. And um, what I am able to get is this, rho star is this, okay. And I calculate that to be So, I get the density, okay. I get the density at the throat to be 0 0.6 times the density in the combustion chamber, which comes out to be this, okay. You should cross check this, just uh, put in 1.22 here and uh, calculate this, uh, you know, using your calculators or whatever, and make sure I have got these values right, okay. So, uh, this is the density in the, uh, so density is done. So, what we get over here is this is now done, okay. So, what we get this is 1.036, okay, rho star, okay. Now, having done that, now the next thing is uh, we will go ahead and calculate this u star, okay. We will calculate u star. So, um, how do we do that, okay. Now, at the throat, which is sonic zone. M star or Mach number is 1, okay. So, it at the throat, okay. So, therefore, U star is equal to A star, right? It is equal to the speed of sound, right? So, which is again speed of sound is again equal to gamma r uh, t, okay. Gamma r t and here because it is at the throat, I can write this as uh, t square, uh, t star. And uh, again, gamma and r are constants which are known. I need to find out t star, okay. So, if you are already not guessed, we will again use the equation. Uh, for a calorically perfect gas like we use for the density and the corresponding relationship is this, right, if you remember correctly. Okay, this is the relationship of the uh, uh, reservoir conditions and temperature, okay. Reservoir conditions of uh, and the temperature anywhere in the uh, flow in the nozzle. So, in this case, if I put this as a T star, then this goes to 1, right, if I do that. So, um, once I do that, so therefore, I can write basically T star, okay, comes out to be So, the temperature at the throat comes out to be 3154 uh, Kelvin and if you remember the combustion chamber it is 3500 3, Kelvin, this is around 3160, okay. So, temperature having got that, so therefore now we can get U star, isn't it? So, therefore we get now uh, U star, okay, U star, so therefore we get that as 1.22. Right, and this comes out to be okay. So U star comes out to be one four one five meter per uh, second. Okay, this is what uh, we uh, get here. Okay, so therefore, so what we do we know over here? So we have M star. So, rho star and u star. So, we have got u star now, okay. We have got the uh, velocity as well, which is 1415 meter per second, okay. I still need um, a star, 
okay, A star, which is the uh, here. Now, A of the throat is actually given to us, okay. A of the throat is given to us, so this is nothing but A star. This A is nothing but A star. Okay, so which is given to us as 0.4. Okay, uh, this is given which is 0.4. So if I do that, then what I get as M star is essentially 586.4 kgs per second. Okay, so uh, basically, we get this, uh, this is the uh, mass flow rate, okay. So, we get a mass flow rate of uh, 586.4 kg per second, okay. So, having got that, now the next thing we uh, definitely need is the, uh, so this is something that we have got, okay. Now, let us uh, look how we can calculate the velocity at the exit, u e at the exit, how do we go about um, uh, doing that, right. Now, uh, so let us try and find out uh, the Mach number at the exit. We have no clue as to what that is, right. And then we will see, because if you see here, we have relationships between the, the densities and Mach number, okay, change in density and Mach number, change in temperature and uh, Mach number. So, maybe we will go and use this sort of thing, okay. Um, if you look here, let us try to see what we can use. So, now what we know here is the reservoir pressure. If you look here from the information that is available to us, we have the reservoir pressure here, which is P naught. And we are also, we also know the reservoir pressure at the exit, okay, which is this right. Now, this should, this, uh, these two should therefore give us a relationship of the, with the exit Mach number, because uh, yes, so li like we have density relationship, we also know that we have Right. So, we have this relationship of the um, stagnation pressure and pressure anywhere in the nozzle with the Mach number. So, here if I use, consider this as an exit, this is the corresponding uh, exit Mach number. So, I am going to use this and find out the corresponding Mach number. Okay. So, um, and this is uh, given, this is given to us, this is something, this is also actually uh, uh, given to us, P naught is also something that is given to us, okay. So, uh, using that, okay, using here, so I am going to just write down the values over here, right. So, what are the, what is the sort of equal, uh, relationship that we get here? So, P naught, P naught is essentially, right this is given, then this is P E, okay, this is equal to 1 plus, this is also uh, given, okay. So, from here I can calculate the exit Mach number. So, I get the exit Mach number to be So, I have an exit mark number just over 4, okay. So, having uh, done this, therefore, how do we calculate the, uh, uh, now at the exit mark, we have an exit mark number, we do not have the exit speed of sound, okay. So, let us do that. So, therefore, now U e is of course, M e into speed of uh, sound at the exit, this, and we do not have that. Okay. Now, uh, let us do this again. Uh, basically, we can write again, you know, this we can write as gamma r t at the. So, I can write the uh, 
the speed of sound at the exit in terms of this, in terms of the temperature. Now, again the temperature at the exit is something that I have not calculated yet. Let us see if I can do that. I am going to again use uh, this equation here. Okay? Last time we put the throat, instead this time we, we will put this as uh, the exit. Okay? So, therefore, so basically I have T is equal to Right? So, in this case, we have this as the exit, we have this as the exit. And by now, we have calculated the Mach number as 4.38. Okay? So, we have calculated this. Okay? And T uh, naught, which is the uh, ambient uh, the reservoir conditions, this is 3500. Right. Having known that, we can now calculate T e from here. Okay. So, T e from here therefore comes out to be T e from here comes out to be this right and hence corresponding uh, A e okay. and hence this comes, comes out to be corresponding speed of sound comes out to be 1.22520, right? This comes out to be 844.8, okay? It is nearly 845 meters per second. So, this is the uh, speed of sound at the exit. Okay. So, once having found that out, we will go back and put it in here. So, what we get here is uh, basically this is right and this comes out to be it is nearly 4000 meters per second, it is 3700 meters per second. So, the velocity at the exit is 3700 meters per second. Let us go and look here. So, what do we have here? Okay. So, uh, did we find out the mass flux? Yeah, we did. So, this mass flux is uh, 586.4, it is 586.4 kg per second. Right? And the uh, velocity at the exit is three seven three thousand seven hundred meters per second. That's a pretty high speed, don't you think? Okay, and um, of course, if you look here, that is all I need to calculate the thrust, because the pressure at the exit is equal to the, uh, uh, the ambient pressure, which is given to us. So, therefore, this term will anyway go to 0 out here. Okay? If not, then of course, uh, if something else is given, then we will probably use this. But nevertheless, we still want to calculate the area at the exit, we will do that. Okay? So, anyway, we are done with the thrust though. So, thrust comes out to be, let us uh, write out the thrust first. Okay? So, thrust comes out to be um, around 2.2 or 22 kilo Newtons actually. Two one seven zero actually, it's two one seven zero kilonewtons. If you were to look at this, so uh, this I can write as just to give you a little more idea. So basically, what we have here is we have nearly two thousand two hundred kilonewton thrust being generated by the um, uh, by the rocket engine. Okay? This is the total thrust. Okay, so, now let us look at uh, what would be, so area at the throat is 0.4 meter squared. Okay? Now, what is the area at in the exit? Okay? So, let us go and see how we will uh, do that. Okay? So, in order to do that,
Okay, so uh, yes, so now uh, again using the continuity, continuity between the, uh, so continuity, so at any point if I say at the throat conditions, right? So, the rate mass flow rate at any uh, through any portion of the nozzle uh, is equal to that through the throat, right. So, from this I can write this equation as, right, this is equal to ok. So, now, uh, then I am going to write this, ok. Now, um, basically I am going to introduce the, uh, uh, I am going to introduce the, um, the, the uh, reservoir conditions here, right, because we have already calculated rho star by rho naught, etc. ok. So, let me write it, so therefore I can write this, ok square this and write it like this. Okay, now this u star, okay, u star is velocity at the throat. So, which is again equal to the speed of sound because mark is 1, okay. So, then I can write this as a star by u, okay, square, okay. So, if I if I am able to write it like this, okay, now if you remember right now this rho star by rho naught is essentially cross check this. So, we have just, we had just written out the relationship between the uh, we just written out the relationships between the uh, densities uh, with Mach number. So, if you write here uh, with respect to the throat, the Mach number goes to 1 and this is the relationship. So, rho star by rho naught is something which is available here, ok. So, and um, this and of course, this is the relationship. Right. So, we will get a value for this. So, we can write that it is a finite value from here. Now, rho naught by rho will be in terms of the Mach number. It will be in terms of the Mach number. So, we can get that in there, ok. And again, a star by u, right. So, this is what? This is nothing but. So, velocity velocity by uh, velocity of sound at the throat, right. So, this is nothing, um, ok. So, essentially velocity by velocity of the throat, uh, sound, velocity of sp uh, speed of sound at the throat, this is nothing but, ok, right. And this I can also write in terms of this is gamma plus 1 by uh, 2, right. This, this is the, so this is then you connect that with the uh, Mach number, ok. So, this is the relationship that we have. So, if you look here for this particular, uh, if you, uh, this particular expression here. So, a by a star, ok, a by a star. So, if you look at this, ok. So, what we will have here is that this is a finite value which you get from here. Now, this is a term which we can write in terms of the Mach number here. Again, this is something we will write in terms of the Mach number over here, the uh, Mach number over here, right. So, if I do that, ok. So, I will get an expression for this in terms of the Mach number. So, let me write that out. So, if I write that out, it comes out to be 
this. Right? So basically what we have here is what we have done here, if you look at this, okay, if you look at this, that we have connected the area at the throat with the area and mark number anywhere in the nozzle. Okay? That's what we have done. If you see, this is the area at the throat which is given to us and this is area anywhere in the nozzle and the corresponding mark number at that point where at the location where we are considering this area and uh, the gamma is known to us. So in this case of course we need the area at the exit, right? And we have calculated the Mach number at the exit. So therefore in this particular case if I had to write this, so basically what I need is area at the exit, right? So then this becomes Mach number at the exit and mark number at the exit is something that we have calculated, uh, right? So here 4.38. So this, so essentially this value is known to us now, this is given to us. So what we get as uh, if I calculate this, so AE therefore, so A at the exit, right? Now A at the exit is, comes out to be a little more than four, 40 times the area at the um, So area at the exit, okay. So area at the exit here comes out to be uh, Right? So therefore, now we have calculated the area at the exit right? and uh, this comes out to be nearly actually little more than 40 percent of the area at the, uh, at the throat. Right? So let us just uh, take a step back and see what is happening here. So we have a rocket engine, okay? rocket engine. So we have a, you know, a diverging nozzle where the area at the throat Okay, but the area of the mm, exit is nearly 40 times or a little more than 40 times the area at the uh, throat, right? So we have this diverging nozzle. So uh, the uh, combustion chamber, you know, pressure, temperature, etc., is uh, given. Okay, so we have an isentropic expansion of the flow over here. Okay, so at the exit, okay, uh, did we calculate? Uh, yes, we have calculated I think, right. So at the exit, okay, the temperature is um, 1125. So at the exit, okay, at the exit, so let me just sort of write this down. This is, uh, this is the interesting part here, okay. So um, okay, so now I have this say a diverging nozzle. So this is the area at the throat, this is the throat region and this area, okay, the area at the exit, it is, uh, this area at the exit is, a is actually is nearly 40 times the area at the, is 40 times the area of the throat, okay. That is how it is expanding. So then and the uh, Combustion chamber, okay, combustion chamber pressure, uh, temperature, combustion chamber pressure is uh, 30 atmospheres, okay, uh, and temperature is 3500 Kelvin. The temperature at the exit drops, right, to a little over 1000 Kelvin. Okay. So, combustion chamber, the pressure, the temperature generated in the, uh, when the gas is produced, it is produced at 3500 Kelvin due to the expansion at the exit it drops down to nearly a little over 1000 Kelvin. Okay. So, um, uh, right. Okay. So, and this, when I am when able to do this, so I generate a thrust, okay, 
which is uh, which is a nearly 2,200 kilonewtons of thrust is generated when I have a uh, when I have a uh, a, a rocket a, a diverging you know, nozzle like this. Okay. So okay, so that was basically um, how you know uh, we we would use a differential area nozzle, you know, to generate uh, thrust. Okay. So um, and the connection of area, the the change in area with the Mach number, and hence the velocity. Okay. So um, okay, so that is that is one problem. So uh, let us now go ahead and try uh, another problem. Okay. So this is, like I said, this is the flow properties connected with the area. Okay, and the important thing to note here is that the area, okay, the area, area change, okay, can be related to the corresponding Mach number, and hence, you know, it can be related to the pressure temperature density changes as well, which is what we just did over here. Okay, so I, I guess uh, we won't be able to finish the next problem, but we'll start it nevertheless. Okay, we'll start this and see, um, uh, you know, see some interesting things from there as well. Okay, this is also a very interesting uh, problem, and I thought that it would be, uh, you know, interesting to sort of understand this. So we have done, right? We have done basically normal shocks, uh, oblique shocks. Okay. And uh, we've also done, you know, shock interactions and so on and so forth. Okay, so um, Okay, so now here, what we have is uh, basically we have a supersonic flow, okay, which has a Mach number three, okay, and uh, we want to basically the simple thing is we have a Mach three flow, and we want to slow it down to subsonic speeds. That's all. So we have a supersonic flow. right which is of right we want to slow this down to subsonic speeds right we want to slow this down to uh, uh, subsonic speeds okay now you know, I mean, what what do you think we should do? I mean, just uh, you know, stop it. You know, turn the flow into itself. So maybe just uh, you know, if I want to do that, I'll go through a shock. You know, what we will do, however, is look at this in two separate ways. So apparently, we could do this, you know, less or more efficiently. We'll see how. Okay. So uh, let us try these two cases. Okay. One is we'll pass this directly through a normal shock, a normal shock wave. Okay, so we will pass this through a we will pass this through a uh, normal shock wave. Okay, and the second is first pass this through an oblique shock wave and then a normal shock wave. Okay, so first. Um, in this case, first it goes through an oblique shock, right, uh, where the shock wave angle is given as 40 degrees, and next is through a normal shock wave. Okay, so we will see um, uh, uh, whether these will be different. Okay. So, and uh, if these are uh, different at all, uh, which one should I choose? Well, should I choose this or should I choose this? And uh, of course, uh, why? Right? So, um, 
in order to do that, so uh, also another thing is so calculate. Okay, I think uh, you know this kind of the answer kind of lies in the question. To if if this these two are going to result in different, um, if these two are going to give us different results, uh, and how are we going to then choose which one should we go about? You know, using in order to do this, and the answer kind of lies in the question itself. But I'll write it down anyways. So calculate the ratio of the final total pressure values for the two cases. So basically in this case, so uh, we can say the so what we need to calculate here is the ratio of the total pressure values for the two cases and uh, the significance of that. Well, the significance of that itself is actually going to give us clues as to which one we will need to choose in order to do something like this. Okay? So, uh, so what we will do here is go ahead and uh, just do the problem first, which by this time you should be, you know, uh, it should not be a problem. But what we will look at is that, you know, the physical aspect of it. Okay? Okay. So let us uh, do this. So first things first. Let's go ahead and um, you know we will do this uh, normal shock wave. Okay. So if we look at this, so um, we have basically so this is our normal shock. Okay. And um, okay, so let's call this as okay, total pressures here, and this is this. Okay, so now, uh, so this is basically for we just passing the flow through a normal shock wave. Okay. If I do that, now from if I now start using the tables, right? If you go and look at the tables, so from the tables what we get is that um, right is equal to this okay and the Mach number in here okay is so this is the mark number which is let me say uh, less than 0.5 actually right so all i do is just you know uh, what is the big deal you know just slow it down to Mach 1. So, we will just pass it through a normal shock wave, go to the tables and just look at it. And corresponding to this, we get a ratio of the total pressures in front and behind the normal shock wave and the Mach number behind it, which is subsonic. You know, why, why are we going through this process? You know, is there more to it? We will see. Okay. So, that is all there is to it. So, we have a subsonic speed uh, you know, of the flow behind the shock. Okay. Okay, so now um, since we are kind of assuming that, 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 that there is more to it, so let us go ahead and see this, uh, you know, let us do this for the second one, which is a combination of an oblique shock and a normal shock. Okay, let us do that. Okay, so if I uh, do for the second one, right? So this is the um, second one, right? So essentially here, so I have an oblique shock. Okay, so I do have an this is an oblique shock and this is a normal shock.
Okay. So, essentially what we, we will therefore have, so we have say look, if I look at a free stream here, so if I um, look at this free stream here, okay, so I have this, okay, and then this free stream is deflected right the free stream is deflected like that and uh, okay so since this has to be a normal shock wave so what I'm going to do is do it this keep my shock basically normal to this okay so what I'm going to do here is keep my shock uh, normal to it okay so then here it doesn't deflect at all it goes like that. Okay, so that is essentially the. Um, so you understand, okay? Now, what you have to understand, if you look at this, you'll be like, okay, both these are uh, tilted or inclined. Well, these are inclined with respect to the horizontal, of course, these are. But whether we, this is an oblique shock or a, a normal shock is dependent how the angler is making with the free stream. So in this case, if you look at this, this is the angle, okay? So this is the angle which is 40 degrees actually. This beta is 40 degrees which is given. So you see this is the free stream in this case, okay? This is a free stream and the shock is making an angle, okay? Uh, you know, the acute angle is, 40 degrees if you look at this okay so this is the oblique shock okay and here if you look at this this shock is actually making 90 degrees with the incoming uh, flow so here the flow comes okay so this is my incoming flow which is mark 3 right and then it goes and hits the, uh, the hit Okay, then it gets, it encounters this oblique shock, it is deflected, it comes here and I make it pass through another shock which is normal to it. So there is no deflection, it follows its path, but of course there will be differences in its properties. So this is, this is the normal shock, okay. So if I do this, then, um, okay, so Basically, uh, this it, I'm going to just call this as P naught one. These are this, uh, going through changes in. Uh, you can consider the flow field as basically three regions, composed of three regions. So you've got this, this, and this. Okay. So now the way let us look at the oblique shock first. Okay. Let us look at this first. So when I do that, okay. So, how do we go about this? The first things first that we do is calculate the component which is normal to this oblique shock based on this. Now, beta is given to us, right? So, therefore, what we calculate is Mn1, which is M1 sine beta, right? And this comes out to be 1.93, which is nearly 2. Okay, so then uh, corresponding to this MN1, okay, corresponding to this, we get a P02 by P01 to be 2. to be this, okay, to be this, okay, and so there the the if you look at this ratios, so we had a point, uh, you know, we had a uh, like a point uh, 3, you can say point 3, 3 and point 8. So, P not 2 by P not 1. So, P not 2 is point 3 times P not 1, okay. And P not 2 here in this case is point 8 times P not 1. So, in this case, P not 2 is less. So, the total pressure behind the normal shock is actually less than the total pressure behind the oblique shock in this particular case, okay. And of course, uh, then we calculate the 
m n 2 which is again point it is around 0 0.6 ok. And uh, of course, then uh, you know we have an m 1 ok. So, corresponding to m 1 equal to 3 corresponding to a shock uh, wave angle of 40 degrees we will go to the theta beta m relationship calculate the deflection angle right calculate the deflection angle to be 22 degrees. So, this angle here this is the deflection. So, this is the deflection angle. So, having done that, so we should be able to calculate the Mach number, Mach number behind this oblique shock which comes out to be ok. This is something that we have done which comes out to be 1.9. So, therefore, the Mach number here is 1.9 which is nearly the um, which is nearly the uh, which, which is nearly 2 ok. So, here of course, you know it was 0.5 we directly got a. So, I pass it through a normal shock I directly get a subsonic flow here of course, I have not got a subsonic flow yet it is still slightly uh, supersonic. So, therefore, we will now pass this through this normal shock and see what we get. So, we will stop here, we will continue from here uh, next class ok and complete this ok. Thank you.